Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode. In our previous episode, we introduced this very important concept, which is the、uh, transfer impedance of our current probes. And there was a lot of math、um, simulation in that episode, which I apologize. Right. So <laughs> this episode will only focus on the practical demonstration. And、uh, hopefully you can grasp the idea very easily. Okay, so in terms of the test setup, very similar to previous setup, we have a functional generator, we have a oscilloscope, and we have、uh, current probes connected to channel two and channel three of the oscilloscope. Channel one of the oscilloscope is connected to the functional generator output. Currently, we have two channels of the functional generator. Generate、uh, output one. We're going to generate a square wave voltage, and、uh, channel two simply follows、uh, channel one. Okay, so really just serving as a reference. And、uh, the output of the functional generator in this case, we connect it to a resistor, 47 ohm resistor. Okay, and you can see from this、uh, setup, we're going to supply five volts peak to peak, and we're going to Uh, supply again a square wave. So if you have peak to peak five volts, and this is about well quasi 50 ohm, isn't it? 47 ohm. So you expect to see something like 100 something milliamps as the peak to peak current, right? And the current waveform should follow the voltage waveform because this is only a resistor load. Of course, here you have a big loop which we know introduce、uh, inductance, but for the discussion. In this episode, actually, that inductance is not that、uh, significant. Okay, so as you can see, we connect two RF current probes in this setup. The first one, right, is this one, with the model number TBCP one dash twenty one hundred, and then the second one is TBCP two dash thirty K four hundred. Okay. So two different models of a current probe. So with the knowledge we learned from the previous discussion, let's have a look at the transfer impedance of these current probes. Okay. So the first one is the TBCP one twenty one hundred, right? So that's this、uh, this this one this fella here. Okay. So if you look at the transfer impedance, you can see there's a big Long flat line, okay. And if you look at the frequency, it covers from sort of 100、um, hertz, pretty low frequency, all the way to about 20 megahertz. Then above 20 megahertz, it starts oscillating. We haven't explained what caused this, right?、Uh, which we'll do later. But this basically is caused by the parasitic capacitance in the winding inside the、uh, current probe. So、um, yeah, we can. Safely concludes that this probe would give us a good current waveform between 100 hertz and 20 megahertz. Okay, so that's what we learned. And I also notice that、um, the transfer impedance in this case is minus 20 dB ohm. Minus 20 dB ohm. Okay, and on the back side you can see、uh, the details, right? Giving you this、uh, lookup table. So if we just look at one megahertz signal, that's the signal we're going to test. It gives you minus nineteen point eight dB ohm. Now, if you do the math, you'll find minus nineteen point eight dB ohm translates to zero point one ohm. Okay, zero point one ohm. Remember this number. Okay, so that's the first current probe. Our second current probe has a transfer impedance like this. Again, if we look at the flat region, that's sort of between here and here. So we're talking about maybe a. A few hundred kilohertz, as you can see here, a few hundred kilohertz to 200 megahertz. Okay, so you can see they work in different frequency range. So this is the flat curve we're talking about, and below this point, you start to get into this、uh, corner point, right? And、uh, and then this is the voltage region we mentioned. Okay, so、um, again, if you look at the transfer impedance, it gives you. About three dB ohm from this curve. Okay, so let's go to the details. If again we go to one megahertz, that gives you two point nine seven dB ohm. So if you do the math again, it is one point four one ohm. Okay, one point four one ohms. Okay, so yeah, let's、uh, test these、uh, two probes. So I'm just gonna output a five volts peak to peak one megahertz square wave. Okay. So you can see on the screen we have the yellow trace, which is channel one, that gives you the voltage pulse we applied, right? And it shows five volts peak to peak. Okay, so 
we can sort of um, move this curve, I guess, uh, up. So not um, yeah. So then we can compare our channel two and channel three. Okay. So I put channel three down there and channel two down here. Okay. So the first thing you notice that these two current waveform. Right, when I say current, because remember this is one megahertz range, okay, one megahertz range, and we know that both in a in a one megahertz range they are flat, so we know this is definitely the current waveform they pick up. But the first thing you notice that actually they are out of phase, okay. So this introduced the first concept in this discussion today is that current probe has directions, okay. So in order to demonstrate that, now I'm going to disconnect channel 3 okay so channel 3 is disconnected and you can see that we have this marking on on this side right if I just simply revert it okay so now I, I put the marking down there and then I put it back okay now you see they are in phase okay so the first le lesson number one in this discussion is that current probe do have directions okay now the second point I want to discuss, right, is if you look at the reading, all the channels are terminated with 50 ohm, as we explained. And uh, if you look at um, the scale, so channel 2, we have 10 millivolts per division, and channel 3 has 100 millivolts per division. And both readings are showing in voltage results, okay? So if you compare the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of channel 2, which is 11 millivolts, okay? And peak-to-peak -peak of channel 3 is 156 millivolts. So clearly, you can see channel 3, which represents this probe, gives you more in terms of the voltage reading. And we call that higher sensitivity of the RF current probe, okay? So this is the second concept we introduce, which is called sensitivity. And generally speaking, the higher the transfer impedance, the higher the sensitivity, because given the same current waveform going through this wire, one gives you a lot more in terms of amplitude than the other. So this is a, a higher sensitivity probe, okay? So going back to the uh, transfer impedance, you can see the, this big one here has minus 20, okay? Whereas the other probe gives you about 3 dB ohm, so definitely a lot more sensitive. That's why you pick up more signals, okay? Now, if you remember, we checked one, at 1 megahertz, this probe gives up about 2.97 dB ohms, and this probe gives us about um, minus 19.98 dB ohm, right? And we also calculate that in terms of, you know, we can uh, calculate the dB ohm and put in ohms uh, function, right? So let's have a look at this one. This one at 1 megahertz gives us 2.97 dB ohm. So that's 1.41 ohm. And if you wanted to calculate the current, you simply put this ratio in the oscilloscope. So if you do the math, 1 over 1.41, that gives you about 0.7 as the ratio. So let's do that, okay? So we go to, oh, actually this is uh, channel 3, isn't it? This is channel 3. So we go to channel 3, right? And uh, we say, okay, we actually wanted to show in current rather than voltage reading. And I know that this current has 1.41 ohms. So if you do one over 1.41, that gives you 0 0.7. So I'll put 0 0.71 just as an example. Okay, so then this would give me my current reading. So you see the current reading becomes 110 milliamps. Remember, this is 5 volts, this is 50 ohms. You divided 5 volts by 50 ohms gives you about 1 point, well, this is 47 ohms. So 5 volts divided by 47 ohms gives you about 1.1 amps. So you know that this reading is spot on, okay? Now we go to channel 2. We mentioned that channel 2 basically has almost minus 20 dB ohm, and that translates into 0 0.1 ohms. Then you do 1. 1 over 0.1, you know the ratio is about 10, okay? So we put current again, ratio, user defined, um, I, I put 10, okay? Then enter, 
Okay, so now both are actually showing you the actual current reading, and you can compare peak to peak of channel two and peak to peak channel one, right? So they are very similar. I mean, we haven't uh, really used the uh, the accurate calculation, just uh, you know, like a ballpark calculation. But you know that these two gives you the the, the correct reading of the of the current you are measuring. Okay, so yeah, I guess that demonstrates the concept of uh, the transfer impedance. Okay, so next, let's have a look at the uh, transfer impedance again of this probe, okay? We know that below 1 megahertz, it starts to get into the voltage region, isn't it? And if I show you, again, the uh, detailed lookup table, you find this is 2.88 at about 250 kilohertz, okay? And this is 1 meg, about 2.97. So basically about 500 kilohertz, it starts to gets into the voltage region rather than the current region which means if we were to use this probe to measure a uh, signal that is less than one megahertz okay sort of in this region then you will get something which is not really a current waveform anymore right as we explained in our previous episode whereas for the other probe right this is the other probe we know that you know it is a really flat even down to 10 kilohertz region, one kilohertz region. So this wouldn't uh, suffer the, uh, the issue when we lower the frequency. So let's prove it, okay? Right, so now you can see we are supplying one megahertz signal, okay? So now I'm going to change the frequency now, okay? So now it's one meg. Let's do 500 kilohertz, okay? Output. Okay, so you can see now we are going to 500 kilohertz region, right? And if you look at the waveform of channel 3, okay? Channel 2 is pretty stable. Again, gives you the reading 116. Again, gives you the same reading. However, if you look at the waveform of uh, channel 3, you see they started to behave differently and this phenomenon is what we call droop okay so this is a, a slight droop at 500 kilohertz let's do 250 then 250 kilohertz okay now you see the droop starts getting um, more and then the reading again is slightly off now so it gives you 122 milliamp peak to peak and the voltage waveform is really not like a square wave per se okay how about 100 kilohertz there we go see again it's definitely getting into the voltage reading range right it's still measuring the same signal however now it's getting into that uh, region below the corner frequency right and it gives you a different wave shape okay so that becomes um, a problem if you are using this probe to measure lower frequent signals. That's why it is so important to check your data sheet of your current probe and ensure that the signal you are trying to measure actually sits in that flat region. Otherwise, you will get something like this. Okay, so we put it back to 500 kilohertz. Okay, you can see now it has a slightly like tiny tiny droop okay so if you have a situation like this where you know that you're using your current probe but not exactly measuring in the flat region the current region of the current probe uh, what can you do then right you can buy a new one of course alternatively alternatively you can use this trip remember that we say that manufacturers often uh, put a uh, trimming resistor inside the current probe to sort of tune the corner frequency right to give you different performance well you can actually do the same now this is a 50 ohm terminating resistor okay now if i put a 50 ohm on my channel 3 okay so i put 50 ohm here that means now i put 50 ohm in parallel with this circuit okay and i put it back into the channel you see the waveform now becomes better and more looks more like waveform 2 now without the droop okay so you can do that but the downside is now you also look at the peak to peak reading it becomes 78 milliamps now rather than 
the 115 milliamps, which is supposed to be, right? This is because when you add more resistance into the current probe, you extend the corner frequency down to lower frequency range, which is good, right? So you can measure even lower frequency signals. But the downside is now you start to lower the sensitivity, okay? Back to our topic one, your sensitivity is now reduced. So this is a, a trade-off you have to accept. And also, you need to now to calculate the new transfer impedance. You can't really use this ratio anymore because you can see it gives you the wrong uh, reading, okay? And uh, yeah, and that's uh, finished today's demonstration. As you can see, very practical today in today's uh, demonstration, but I hope you really now grasp the idea of the transfer impedance, the, the concept of droop, and how you can uh, sort of cope with it given the limited resource you have. Okay, so um, we'll see you next time then.